Okay guys, I've just prepared, I've got a fire burning over there. It'll take about two hours, an hour and a half to produce some decent ashes. And uh, we will be cooking this in the camp oven of course. But uh, I thought I'd show you first off a bit of preparation for the lamb roast. Uh, what I do is I have a tendency to have a few spices, you know, rosemary, all-purpose spice seasoning, and uh, oh, rosemary twice, getting worse than my old age. A bit of Saxon salt, a bit of black pepper, and a bit of olive oil. And I basically just pre prepare my roast very simply by cutting holes in it. Here's a group of holes in the post. Right, get the rosemary. Place the rosemary on top and rub them into the holes. You'll get some good flavours then, otherwise you do not get the flavour of the rosemary in the meat. I like to leave the rosemary sit on for a while because it takes a while for the uh, meat to, to suck it up. An all-purpose seasoning, I like to put a bit of all-purpose seasoning on it. I don't muck around, I put lots on. Again, I give it a bit of a rub. You get the seasoning to go into the little holes that I punched in on. And uh, that usually makes them go quite well. A little trick, a bit of oil. Olive oil, but that's all I ever use. I don't use any of the other oils. I don't like them when you're roasting in an oven. Olive oil is more forgiving if you overheat it. Yeah, most of those canola oils and so forth, if you overheat them, um, they don't taste the best afterwards. They have a tendency to go off. Okay. I put a little shrinking of salt on the meat. That will make it garnish a bit and. and uh, Actually come out quite nice. A little bit of black pepper. Lovely pepper. And a little trick that I always do, I always put a bit of sugar on it. Now what do I do? I will now leave this sitting here quietly for approximately an hour. That'll soak up all the, the, uh, the rosemary and that'll it'll expand and uh, it'll, it'll virtually get it quite ready. I usually put them in the camp oven when the oven's hot. I'll put it in upside down. I'll cook it for about three to five minutes. Then I'll turn the thing over. This is on a hot camp oven. And I'll turn it over and I'll seal the other side. Then I'll take the pot oven off, which I'll show you. And I, I will cook it on top of the oven for a little while today. I'll show you a little trick that I do to defuse the heat. A lot of people have problems with burning their camp oven when they first start cooking. I will cook this on the coals on the ground eventually. But um, I'll show you a couple of little things that I, I've learned over the years the hard way. And uh, misfortunately, when you're a bush cook, uh, it doesn't matter how good it tastes or how bad it tastes. That's it mate, you lump with it, you've got to live with it. So, another little trick I have, I have one of these little thermometers. You, you push it into the meat and uh, I use it when I'm cooking. And uh, that's quite a useful little item because it lets you know whether you've got the meat up to the right level or not. But you can usually smell it, you can usually smell it cooking beautifully. I'll cook the meat for about two hours and then I'll put the veggies in. And cook the veggies and the meat for about another hour. And uh, if all goes well, everything could be done about the right time. But uh, you never know, you never know. Okay guys, once I've got the camp oven hot on top of the plate here, I'll put the roast in and start cooking it. But uh, at the moment, I'm just trying to heat the, the pot up itself. Uh, it's a good idea to warm the pot before you put the meat in, otherwise it sticks and uh, it's a bit silly. One of the tricks that I've learned over the years, if you're going to cook on top of the barbecue plate, and I will show you that in another video, I'll show you how to do some rice, sweet and sour and some chops, and uh, I'll show you the little trick I do. But uh, you put a bit of dirt on top of the plate or a few ashes off the ground, 
put them on top of the plate, and put the bar plate back on, put the cup back on the plate. You'll, you'll find that'll just defuse the heat coming out of the steel plate, and uh, it won't burn everything that's touching the pot. But uh, it's, an, it's an old trick, it works well, and uh, it's really good. The downside of cooking on top of the barbie plate is that if there's a cool breeze around or something, you'll always get a cold part. One side of the pot will be colder than the other side, so you never get an even cook. So if you're going to cook on top of the plate, you've got to keep turning the pot about a quarter of a turn about every 15 minutes to keep the uh, heat evenly distributed all the way around. Okay guys, it's a, it's a bit cool up here today, and uh, I'm actually at Grant, picnic ground up in the Alpine regions above Dago, and uh, I can't quite get enough heat in the plate. So I'll put the pot straight into the fire. Uh, this will get it hot, and uh, we'll, we'll stick the lamb roast in it now. And uh, you'll find that when we take the top off, there'll be a bit of steam comes out. Of course, one has the tools handy. And uh, I don't go out buying fancy tools and all that sort of thing. I use a tent peak. Tent peak works. Beautiful. Smoke coming out of the pot. Drop the lamb roast in. As you can hear, she's hissing nicely. The pot's nice and hot. Put the top back on. Now, I'll, I'll leave that now for about 15 minutes. And then I'll come back and turn the roast over for about 15 minutes. And then I'll lift it up and I'll defuse it and put some heat on top. Uh, I want to seal the roast first and then I want to start cooking it. Okay, now the, the uh, pot's been on for half an hour. And uh, what I'll do now is uh, have a check of everything. Pick the pot up. Pull her off. I got my tent peg this time. Beautiful. Ah, oh, blast. My roast is quite quite nice here. It's coming along quite pleasantly. Now Now's the time that I put the heat stick in. Give it a couple of ticks to see our temperature. Well, we establish the fire. Put some more ash. Stir it up a bit. Okay, the roast is coming along quite nicely now. So what we'll do, I've probably got too many veggies here, but uh, oh well. I like a bit of pumpkin. Oh, come on. I like a bit of spud. And I always enjoy a bit of roast carrot. That'll do me. There's another good tip, guys. Don't put your tent peg on the pot lid. It's hot. <laughs> it gets hot. <laughs> oh well. Here's the brakes. I've got this policy where I won't put things on the ground. If I do, I always forget the damn things and lose them. Okay. Let's get the pot back on again. And let it go for another good half, three quarters of an hour, maybe an hour. Because the fire's gone down a fair bit now. Bit 
hot on top. Okay. You can listen, you can hear this just just sizzling. That's what you need. Okay, another half hour's gone, and um, I'm just going to check the roast, see how it is going. It's sizzling quite well, I can hear it. It's quite beautiful sound. And uh, we should be getting somewhere near a reasonably cooked roast. Got my tent peg this time. Oh, lovely. That's beautiful cooking. In fact, I might cut the spuds in half, I think, because I don't think they're going to be cooked in time. Okay, this got a long way to go. Yes, honey just starting to cook. So the old trick is cut them down into small pieces. Well, that'll speed them up. So, and, uh, we should be pretty close then, I reckon. We should be pretty close. The, um, the more ashes, the new ashes on top, because it, they think it does get cold. Under the fire here it's got and gets further away. <laughs> it's uh, harder and harder to get out of my knees. Okay. There's a bit of ash. Fresh ash on top. Okay. Let's pull the fire back together. There's still a lot of heat there, you'd be surprised how much heat's there. Now I'll stack up some some of the ashes around the edges because um, I want a bit more heat in there. And uh, my fire's got a bit low. Huggy Davy. We'll be back in about another half hour. Okay, we've had the roast on now for two hours. And uh, it'll be pretty getting close there. It'll be getting very close. So what we'll do now is we'll pull her off again. Have a look. Let's turn some things over. Never notice where you go, you always get smoke in your eyes and you stand next to a fire. Oh, that looks magic. Buds are coming along nice. Yep. Yep. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'll just give her a little bit more, another half hour or so, and uh, we're going to be pretty close to it. Change the ashes again on top of the lid. Bring the hot ones again. Get the hot ones.
you'll notice that we've got a bit of breeze blowing. And the breeze is actually making small cold spots on the side of the pot. So I have to rotate the pot about every five minutes just to keep the heat even all the way around. Okay guys, my little roast has been cooking for some time now and uh, I can hear it sizzling away quite merrily there and uh, I think she should be pretty close to being ready now. So we'll see how we go. Oh, of course I left me peg behind and me fork behind again, didn't I? There's your lamp. And your studs are pretty near done. So voila, there you go, there's a nice little lamb roast. And now I'll have cold lamb for a couple of days when we're out here. So that's it. The next video will be sweet and sour, rice and uh, chops. You'll, you'll find out a quite an easy brew to make up. Potatoes, pumpkin and carrots. A, fit, a meal fit for a king, out in the bush. The only way to eat. That's all from Jim. I'll catch up later. Okay guys, so there we go, bit of lamb in the pot, it fell off the bone beautifully and uh, quite, a, quite a good meal.